How was your relief this morning, Ronan Mullen? Oh, it was. Uh, it's kind of what it's what the Irish boxing journey has been on this whole Olympics in microcosm, where a bit of calmness, a bit of confidence early on, drifted a little bit in the middle. Not that things were going overly wrong, but you're just getting a little bit, a little bit touchy. And then she came out for that third round and put on an absolute virtuoso clinic, really, and um, absolutely brilliant stuff. When when all the chips were down, she she delivered in the best way possible. And I think roll on Sunday. I think everybody's buzzing for it now. Uh, can, can you explain to us what her uh, tactical approach would have been to the fight overall from, from what you've gleaned from, I, I presume you haven't watched it back yet, but the three rounds that we did see? Yeah, like obviously the, the notable thing in the early going was the referee sort of warning them. It's something we've seen a couple of times in this Olympics where, and it's the want of amateur referees in large part really to kind of encourage fighters to engage. It was a chess match as Kelly alluded to in her post-fight interview. And it was in these instances where both boxers are going to back their technical skills. It's kind of, they're kind of coaxing the other one to blink first. And that's how the first minute or so played out. Um, Cesson D I actually felt was the one who pressed the action ever so slightly in that opening half of the first round. But once Kelly found a rhythm, you could see she had the, she had the advantage. It, it played out in a similar fashion to the, the 2018 final, which she referenced as well. And then she kind of, she developed a, a foothold, I would have thought, into that first round as was borne out in the scorecards. The second round was a bit strange. I don't know if it was a tactical ploy from Kelly or a mindset thing. She did seem to, um, she was still doing all her fainting and her her lateral movement and perpetual motion with her upper body, but she wasn't following that up with the shots that she was um, towards the end of the first round. So I'm not sure what quite happened there. Cess indeed did come into her own and again, the scorecards narrowed a bit so the third round it seemed like it was all to play for and like she was just phenomenal she came out and really forced the issue in that third round a lot of front foot stuff and as we've touched on in our previous calls Owen the way she switched from mm. Southport Orthodox like you can you can prepare for this and as, as accomplished a fighter as she is you know what you're going to get with Kelly Harrington you just don't know what you're going to get because she starts Southport she she's uh, like segues to Orthodox briefly Again, Southpaw in the second round, spots of orthodox, and then orthodox for the third round, where she kind of laid a marker down and showed she could win in any fashion possible. So, yeah, I think in terms of what she's put on on tape at these Olympics, she's sh shown such a breadth of skills that she will um, fancy her chances on Sunday, as we saw in the second semi final. If, if that was a chess match, the first one, the second one was like Call of Duty or Street Fight <laughs> or something like that. It was. Proper. It really was hell for leather stuff so again we know what's coming on Sunday mm. you, you would back Kelly to be able to, to deal with it hopefully uh, what, why does uh, she come out in the third round in an orthodox stance is that herself do you think saying right okay I'm going to mix this up a little bit do you think Conlon and Zara are telling her that yeah because as we said the other day often she will just find herself switching stances mm. which is what the very best people do where they'll just uh, sort of slalom in between both whereas it seemed like a pretty decisive thing that she spent a, a good portion of the second half of the fight in the orthodox stance against the southpaws so obviously as we said before southpaws aren't used to coming up against southpaws it's just by dint of the the rarity of their supremacy in boxing that the, the best ones get to the top but there's very few beneath so for Cess and D the picture was always changing and I think that was just something it was sort of um, Kelly's ace in the pack that she knew she could change things up if the need arose. Again, I wasn't quite sure. It wasn't as if the fight was like rolling away from her in the second round or anything like that. It just seemed to be a bit of a stalemate and Cess on D just by dint of her probably more aggressive approach was was nicking that in the mind's eye. But you know, any doubt in that regard was quickly quashed with a decisive final round from Harrington. And it's the first time she's probably had to navigate a, a tricky spell in these Olympics so far. Sunday will be nine minutes of choppy water so I think she'll have to get herself in the mind frame for that but if there's one thing clear from her her media dealing so far she's taken all of this in her stride she's a uh, sort of embracing the emotion of what she's done here for the wider community at home and just getting that medal in the bag from a personal point of view but like on the horizon the gold medal has always been in her in her eye and this is her chance to have a go at it on on Sunday it is that relaxed approach that is so impressive Ronan that when the chips were down and they weren't they weren't too far down there was still always a sense after the second round that she, she was still the better fighter and was still going to win 
but when you're in that ring and you start to feel the tide turn ever so slightly, I'm sure there is a temptation to be like, oh God, I'm, I, need, I need to show something here. I need, I need, to, I need to, to box aggressively and, and really make my mark in this fight. And she kind of stuck to her gun. She, she kind of just upped the intelligence even in, in the final round and painted a, a very composed picture, which is almost the most impressive thing. Yeah, and uh, like, like the, the jeopardy of the scoring system at the moment, we don't have to go, go over. It's, mm. it's been a story of the games almost where the, um, the sort of disparity in, in what's impressing who on, on the judges' scorecards. Like if you go back to 2018, one of the judges gave Cess D the whole fight 30-27. And it was a similar case in this one where Kelly was comprehensively swaying certain judges and then had to win over certain others. And that was the case going into the third round where she knew who she had to impress almost. And it was almost a sense of, I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to win here. But mm -hmm. that change of tack, it, like it, it was just such a, a champion's mindset like to, to take the initiative in that fashion where, yeah, she could have coasted and done what she was doing and probably would have nicked the decision anyway, but she just put a, a firm exclamation point on matters and like it's it's one of the it's sort of one of the crowning moments of Irish Olympic boxing in history I would say just the way she took command of that third round and if she does go on to win gold medal that will almost be her signing off moment that you know this was the, this was truly the moment where we knew Kelly Harrington was on course for the greatest of things. Yeah that's what I was going to say the intelligence of her and I think maybe in that third round does she hold back and wait, see where she's at, and then just go for it. Like, she she definitely did. It looked like she'd more in the tank, but as you said, the second round was cagey, and then all of a sudden, we've seen Kelly come alive almost. Yeah, it's it's that IQ, isn't it? Like, from, you can probably underestimate what that 2018 World Championship did for her. Obviously, this is way more of a bigger stage, but to beat, beat the world in, in that fashion back three years ago and sort of it sort of set in motion this this run of dominance almost for Kelly Harrington. Granted, her opponent on Sunday is the reigning world champion, but but Kelly had had her injury issues and whatnot. But I think coming off the back of Katie Taylor's decade long reign or whatever, I think Harrington almost needed that as a as a sense of assurance that you know she did belong at the top level. And you could hear her. I think it was after her first fight or no after she secured bronze, she was saying sometimes I used to think I was lucky, but now I know I'm not. And you could almost see that sense of belonging as she as she came out for that third round, where a lesser fighter would have wilted, maybe a fighter with less experience would have wilted, but she actually relished it. She she rose to the occasion in such an impressive way and. You know, you can't say enough for her credentials and her mindset. As much as she's technically proficient, that was sort of a, a win of Wales as much as anything. Yeah, you do get the sense at times like she is very grounded, but almost that she doesn't, she believes obviously how good she is, but there, there's a doubt there at times that I, I'm doing this, like this is real, this is happening to me. Yeah, and like people have spoken so eloquently and brilliantly about what she represents to her community at home and that's obviously a big driving force for what she does like interesting quotes from her that you know irregardless of what she achieves at these games you know i'm not just a boxer i'm kelly harrington i think that is sincere some people say that almost as if to deburden themselves and and kind of play to, play down things but i do actually think whether she comes home with a gold medal or not she's going to be back to her old routine and you know that's such a, a fundamental part of her life and it's it's actually an incredible thing that a world class athlete can conduct herself in this way and and sort of embrace that um, that country ethos and that hometown ethos almost and you know uh, just as as perfect a symbol for Irish sports I, I would say on the world stage as you could possibly wish to have because as much as she's a, a brilliant fighter and sports person she's a fantastic character as well and I can imagine we're well used to her interviews she's done plenty and you know she's charmed us for several years at this stage but you can imagine now with the international audience all eyes on her that I'm sure she's captivating plenty overseas as well. I think that's a really good point and uh, Adrian was on last week going through Ireland's most loved Irish sports people from Katie to Lowry to Paul O'Donovan and really Kelly Harrington moves herself into that category immediately over the course of these games because it really is at the Olympics when an amateur boxer can put themselves in the shop window like that and everybody becomes aware not only of the fighter that she is but of the person that she is and people become aware of her backstory and her job and the work that she does and the, the importance of her in the community in, in North Dublin and, and, and that sort of stuff 
will really, I guess, magnetise her to, to the public if it hasn't done already. And, I mean, she doesn't even need to win on Sunday, even though we'll get into that in just a moment, Ronan, but she's already got a place, I think, in the hearts of every Irish sports fan and every Irish person who's even paid a passing interest to her career. Yeah, there's just such a realness to her, isn't there? Sort of, it's it's sort of a, possibly a misnomer to say it's re- she's relatable because she's an elite international athlete, world class. I could probably not relate to her in a million years, but in terms of how she presents herself and like the, f- the familial links and and that sense of community that I mentioned, you know, everybody can relate to that. And the fact that she can exhibit it and sort of channel it in in such an extraordinary way, I think that's why the Irish people are, are able to get behind her. And, you know, at 31 and, you know, the point has been made that is sort of prime boxing age, but the fact that she's had to bide her time and quite cognizantly so that like, she obviously back in Rio in 2016, she won at the World Championships. She got a silver medal there, but at 64 kgs and non-Olympic weight, and she would have been watching sort of the the, the rumblings in Rio and what went down there. I think she was what doing TV analysis and thinking, you know, I should really be there. I have the talent to be there. And Tokyo was always going to be the prime target with Katie having uh, segued over to the pro ranks. And you know, while the journey from Rio to Tokyo has been a long one, it's been longer for Kelly than anybody when you think about it, that she's that precursor of, of years where she was winning titles and, and doing really well at boxing, but couldn't get that Olympic chance until until now. And talk about seizing with both hands, you know what I mean? It's, it's all well and good being put in a position, being the top seed, getting a nice favourable draw. But when the chips were down in a really difficult semi-final, she she delivered in spades and she's going to have to deliver in in spades of plenty on Sunday because it's it's a super difficult task. Yeah. The, the, the positive obviously is that we know what we're getting. So she mentioned that she'll be chatting to Noel Burke and and the Team Ireland coaches obviously and coming up with a game plan. The game plan would probably be clear from Kelly Harrington, but it's just a bit execution. And as Mira Pakkinen, who's an elite fighter in her own right, top top fighter, had no answer for what Freire was brought was bringing to proceedings today. So mouth-watering uh, final on Sunday in prospect, but uh, this, I think everyone behind behind Harrington, the few people who didn't set their alarms for 6 a.m. this morning will be setting them for 6 a.m. on Sunday, I'm sure, and the whole country will be behind it. That's for sure. And that that's a, a good point you make about uh, Potkin and just no answer earlier on. I think um, it's pretty terrifying uh, for Eris' performance earlier on, but I'm getting the sense, Ronan, from what you're talking about that, it will be a totally different fight when she comes up against Kelly Harrington. She'll come up against a better game plan on Sunday. And anybody who was, like me, a little bit blown away by Ferreira this morning, it's not. It's, she's not going to have that dominance on Sunday is, is what you can assure us is what I'm gathering here. Yeah, like, I think the important thing for Kelly, and I know it's only a nine-minute fight, but she has to prove that she can stick with Ferreira physically. That's going to be quite important, you know, earn her respect. And, you know, while Kelly is more of a fleet of foot and is a crisp puncher, I think she has to, like, earn Ferrer's respect with, you know, decent power shot in the early going just to sort of show that while she'll back her slick skills and and sort of lateral movement and bring generalship to win this fight on the scorecards, that, like, it's, it's she has to arrest the tide that Ferrer is going to be bringing because so her, her style is going to be nonstop pressure. And I don't want to do her a disservice either you know a very technically accomplished fighter in her own right but she her engine is just incomparable she's going to be a tough one to diffuse but i think um kelly as you said has the has the angles to do it has the wherewithal to do it has the acumen to do it and as she's going to have to paint that picture that we talked about she's going to have to give Pereira a different picture in every round and almost you know, win the judges over that way because if it's on work rate, it's going to be a difficult one. But if it's on boxing skills, you'd back Kelly Harrington every day of the week. Right. Well, that's a, a really encouraging note to leave it on. Ronan, great stuff this week as ever. And we'll hopefully chat to you with even better news next week. Yeah. Thanks a million, folks. Cheers. Ronan Mullen there on the line. And I'm sure you'll be able to hear his stuff later on in the PM show as well.